Hello everyone, Luke Rides. Luke Rides is back with a very special video for you everyone and also a how to do video. We're going to disassemble it, we're going to take it all out and we're going to work our way down the, the end cans on both sides and work our way down to the mid pipe. <laughs> Oh my god, yes, more. So pretty exciting. Um, a standard, the XT660R, such a quiet motorcycle, even though she's a massive enduro, um, Yamaha just really muted the XT660Rs. Um, and now, with this upgrade, we're about to make her singing and banging and making all sorts of naughty noises and happy noises. So really excited. We're going to go through this from absolute start to finish um, here at Luke Rides. You're a good man. What we're going to do is get out a very useful chemical that I'm going to show you and we're going to spray it around the bolts, joints um, from the back of the end cans all the way to the mid pipe. And we're just attacking all that corrosion and gunk that's built up inside have the mid pipe section down there. Um, also bolts like this, you know, and in this area here possibly. So we're just gonna have to work it through and let's get that chemical. So we have a carpet, final solution. And this is the sort of stuff that's used by uh, body shop professionals and, and paintwork professionals. And what this is gonna do is absorb all the little bits of dirt and gunk that falls on the floor, um, which also ends up protecting the carpet from getting dirty and mucky. So all the dirt can go on this material here, which will be thrown away at the end of the job. So that's a good idea. Whoa. Uh, definitely a paddock stand is worthwhile. Definitely do that and get started with a paddock stand. So you're probably gonna use a little bit of force with your tools. So I've used this quite handy Velcro strap that is push pulling on the front brake. Um, and what that does is that locks the front brake in place. So no matter how much force I exert through my socket sets and tools, the motorcycle isn't gonna judder forward and you know, possibly try and lift off the side stand. Um, it's always God handy to have a pair right. of overalls. That's always handy. Um, and then just, then we're gonna need our socket set. Let's get cracking. It's showtime. Is on the legendary Yamaha XT660R is ideally you want to actually start working on the link pipe and you want to start undoing um, this clamp at the bottom here so let's see if we can get some WD-40 on it first I can just about yeah I can feel where the, the head of the clamp screw is I can feel it and it's actually quite nicely positioned it's weird because it feels like 10 mil just about fits. Okay, here comes the tricky bit, everyone. He's attacking this bastard. Nice. But we're going to need some more power. Power! Which in the world of cars and motorcycles is called leverage. Oh, oh, God, that's tight. A few inches later. Oh, beautiful. Shit just got real. Clamp here, and it completely and utterly, the bolt that's inside this clamp completely sheared off. God fucking damn it! And that's what happens when so much corrosion takes place this metal is so rock hard that it literally would rather shear than move bad ah oh, this is turning into a bigger job than we thought we've actually got a look at now somehow a fresh clamp 
because that one is just absolutely fucked. Uh. God fucking damn it! Hanger. I look where I just put the hanger bolts back in place. So at least the end cans aren't um, hanging in the midair. And why would you do this? Well, because what we don't want is for this header and the mid pipe to bend. If they bend, they'll never go back into shape again. And um, just the headers alone and that mid pipe are massive amounts of money. Um, so we've had to stop. If you continue trying to pull away the end can when there's a massive seizure in that joint, all that's going to happen is you're going to bend the factory mid pipe, so you're going to bend the metal, and then once you've done that, that mid pipe's never going to be the same again. It won't ever seal, it won't ever meet up with the aftermarket exhaust. You cause yourself a massive headache and a massive expense. Alrighty. See you guys soon. Next shot. <laughs> Day two. Calm down, corrosion. I want to every promise I've been praying for a night. I hold on to every goal and fall through it. No, not tonight. We've got movement. We're, oh, we're making the, the metal inside the area that's been heated expand because of the temperature. Um, we're making it expand to try and break the, the seizure, the seize inside this joint. We're making that layer of rust, that layer of corrosion expand and break. Whoa. Take your time when handling something like this. Do not rush messing with something that's fairly dangerous, trust me. Okay, we're moving over to the near side now, we're moving over to the near side. Yeah, it's moving. It's moving. Come on, you fucker. Come on, you corrosion, you bastard. Yeah, it's definitely moving. Plenty of heat in there for me. Go It's definitely moving. Oh. Huh? Holy shit. Ain't that amazing that it was expanding that metal that broke that layer of rust that was stopping us from pulling off those end cans just because of a layer of rust? What? You fuckers! You fuckers! Day three. And gonna have to take this Yamaha factory exhaust material off the joints. Um, or else the new Darvik link pipes 
will never fit. So let's get started on that now. So you are going to need to get a disposable screwdriver that you really don't care about, position the screwdriver where the Yamaha material is, and then use the screwdriver to start attacking that material. As you want to start pushing it off the exhaust pipe. Whoa. Whoa. Isn't that interesting how soft this this material is? I mean that's very soft material, isn't it? I think this Yamaha exhaust system is making a bit of a tune. Daddy's all pissed off! I can't say pissed off! <laughs> What do you think this is, kid? TV kitty hour where we all sit around and lick Bonnie the dinosaur's fucking pussy? Huh? So the reason why I'm on at uh, Luke Wright, um, <laughs> you see, so the, the tools that I'm using is a soft hammer and a, at the moment, a stumpy screwdriver. So why is Luke, uh, Luke Wright doing that? Well, uh, first of all, I don't want to use a, um, a, a hard hammer because, you know, I'm working with the headers of this um, legendary Yamaha XT660R and if I use a heavy hammer and I am not careful um, I could potentially damage these headers because I'll impact the metal in the headers and that will damage them because the, the uh, metal, the headers, will never be the same they'll never look the same so if I use something like this, a rubber hammer, a soft hammer instead, I can use as much force as I want. <laughs> but the force is not going to mark or dent or, or impact the headers and push the headers, uh, the, the material the headers are made out of in. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty time consuming hard going work because it is just a fucking nightmare. Okay everyone look Christ let's get scrubbing. Um, it's also a very good idea that obviously if you suffer from um, bad skin, if you suffer from eczema, if you suffer from any other sort of you know awfulness that you, your skin doesn't like it if it gets dirty or um, doesn't like it if you've got like for a matter on there um, wear a pair of um, garage gloves <laughs> Side. I, will, I will go through the cleaning process and obviously what I'm going through as we enter the next stage of this job for this legendary massive big engined enduro from a Yama Yamaha. But uh, whack it. Whammy! 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 Whammy!
see every do you see why everyone on YouTube why mechanics have to charge fifty pounds an hour? Imagine trying to do this your fucking self. It's just fucking hard work. I'm not even at the halfway point yet. Alrighty then. Fuck all the old wooden here, fuck the moon, fuck corn on the cob, fuck squirrels, fuck me, fuck you, fuck everything. The end. The end. Move on. Remember everyone who comes big swings. Find myself so desperate on my own. Ah, fuck. On my knees to break. Eternity later. Bad. And looking pretty good. That's that's a lot better than it was uh, t uh, 15 minutes ago. Tomorrow for sure. Okay, so as we did before, we need to get the uh, lovely new Tyrolvic exhaust clamp and we need to loosen it off. Whoa. Whoa. And now the trick, everyone, the trick is we are not loosening off the clamp all the way. We're no, don't don't loosen off all the way. What you're doing is just slightly taking the edge off so you can see that the clamp is moving. But do you see how I haven't brought the um, bolt that flows through the clamp all the way out? Because if that comes all the way out, you're gonna give yourself a little bit of a headache because it will be an absolute bugger to try and put this bolt through the clamp again. Yeah, baby, yeah! Okay, so here's the, the trick that I found. Um, what you're looking for is you're fitting the link pipe, everyone, is if you notice the link pipe has a certain kink in the middle of it, that kink right there, and that kink steps out from the swing arm, so that kink is away from the swing arm and what that means is that as long as the kink is away from the swing arm you've got a pretty you're fairly certain that this is the correct side uh, this is the correct um, link pipe uh, to fit on the left hand side so you know you're fitting the right side of the link pipe on the right side of the Yamaha XT660R <laughs> yeah Definitely give this fucker a good old push. Okay, yeah, this link pipe's definitely going in. Oh. Because, motherfucker. You know, it's a good old fucking shove. Good old fucking shove. Right until it can't shove anymore. As the dialvic exhaust material moulds and fits around the headers. Oh, I've given that link pipe a right old shot. God damn! Well, meanwhile... Here's a, a top tip for you, everyone. Uh, the top tip is, you know, because I'm, I'm learning my, myself, because I'm learning myself when it comes to this sort of stuff, is you would assume that you'd nip up and clamp on the link pipe where it, where it joins the headers. Now, that's what you'd think, but the truth is, is that by doing that, that's actually a really bad idea. Why is that? Because you've then got to fit the Dialvec end can, but you've got to like mate up the end can and, and make sure that it fits to these uh, exhaust hangers here. And what you want is you want that slight movement. 
you want that slight give in the uh, link pipes so you can adjust them nicely and just get them in the right position for the end cans to then snug on but if you assume well I'm just going to tighten up this uh, link pipe because you'd think well it will just all fit what's going to happen is you're then demanding this link pipe that's already nicely snubbed up to move and it ain't going to move and what you're going to do is you're going to kind of you're going to manipulate the exhaust seal which is bad because then your exhaust seal is going to be manipulated and won't quite seal properly you know how do you put it it is like if you had several pipes you know one after the other after the other and you just went yeah i'll join them all up but what if one of those pipes has a has a, an angle to it well how are you going to get the how are you going to manipulate the pipe with the angle if you've nipped up all the pipes behind it um, because what you'll do is then you'll bring in the the pipe with the kink in it out of parameters it's all about science it's all about the the physics that are happening behind the scenes but I know it's not easy to understand but yeah so far so good maybe we should just ride around a legendary XT660R with these link pipes <laughs> yeah just screw the end cans we'll just leave that for like n never <laughs> Eventually, it's just about taking your time because as long as you're gentle and you're careful, oh, that means less chance of you, you know, putting any marks into your lovely new link pipe because obviously you're up against a swing arm, you know, you're up against, well, you get up against all sorts of things. So the question is, how does this want to fit? Uh, oh yeah, oh, okay cool, I can feel it already starting to go in, yeah, there we go. Okay, I can already feel the link pipe is just starting to go in, it's not, it's not the easiest of angles. Ah, uh -uh. oh, for fuck's sake. No. One eternity later. Bad. Which I call the Velcro strap, or the brake Velcro strap. What this little baby's going to do is it's just going to hold in the front brake. Now Luke rides. Why are you trying to hold in the front brake? Well, I'm trying to hold in the front brake because at the moment, as I'm trying to fit the link pipe, did you notice? I don't know if you noticed, but the XT660R just moved a little bit on our paddock stand. And that, in itself, is pretty scary. You don't want your Yamaha XT 660R moving. You don't want that. Oh, I've got to put some force into it. A few inches later. So you need to put this inside of here. And clearly this doesn't to go over there or back here. The whole point of this here is to give some protection between the mount and the end can. Whoa. Whoa. Hopefully Cried's camera can just about show it to you. Um, so as you're manipulating the rubber, see there, there is a lip of the rubber that has wrapped itself around the exhaust hanger. Right there. But if you follow the lip and then you see that the lip disappears, I'm using the, the, the edge of the lip that has wrapped around, that has gone around the exhaust hanger to then push the lip next to it into the hanger and it just takes a lot of, um, even I'm learning as it takes a lot of fettling, you can't rush this sort of work, you can't rush this sort of job, you just got to keep working that rubber until that rubber's happy, until it's exactly where it wants to be um, and as long as you get the rubber right then um, you're golden two hours later Whoa. Whoa. okay guys uh, same as before this is the um, off side uh, this is the off side um, exhaust cam and again we're just listening off the um, bottom exhaust clamp 
because that's what we need to do. We need to loosen it off so we can get it moving like so. And then that means we can get rid of this cover like so. And then we just need to put the the clamp back into place. Uh, we don't need it a tight, we don't need it tight. We just need it to be back into position like so. Okay, make sure if we can the nuts there too. Okay, cool. That just makes life a little easier for us. For our offside uh, diavic exhaust, you can see as well that it is pretty nicely fitted. And what we want is to aim for the same fitment as before. So this is ripping off. Um, so, so every exhaust clamp that is brand new quite often comes with this coating here. Um, now the clamps are supposed to be shiny. Uh, so this coating is actually a um, that you can literally pull it off. Oh, oh, so satisfying, so satisfying, man. Ooh. Look at that, nice, lovely, shiny exhaust clamp. Oh, very sexy. And now we've ripped off the um, cover. The protective coating is just making sure again that the rubber insert inside the hanger and that the rubber lips are where they're supposed to be. Eventually. Huh. Freaking technique. Better. Yeah, definitely better. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. Not bad. Later. We just had to have a, a... We had to play around with the adjustment. We just had to keep playing around with it, really. Uh, where, where the bolt that clamps the clamp down, we're actually going to have at the back. So what you see is that lovely smooth clamp and look at that, even the Dialvic logo, straight on it, straight there. So that's what we're going to do. Um, what you're going to need is a 5mm Allen or Torx. But there's also this nut that's behind the bolt to nip up this little knock, lock bolt, which I have here. It'd be nice to... Uh, Use a proper ratchet, but I don't think we won't be able to do that just yet. Okay, so that's pretty well nipped up. So you keep your tooling together when you can. One hour later. Okay, and again, we're gonna have the uh, exhaust clamp right over those fins, so right over the lip, the the little uh, lips here of the end can and where it says Dialvic and we're actually going to put the bolt uh, put the bolt that nips up the um, exhaust exhaust clamp at the back of the legendary Yamaha XT660R um, obviously pro tip is to is to always make sure that when you're putting your tool onto a, a bolt head or a socket is it's important that you get that socket on the head perfect um, or else all that happen um, is that you could start rounding off that bolt head and that would be bad news for you it's already feeling pretty good okay, and just be careful obviously as you're working you're working near Plastics, you're working near the swing arm. Sorry, that clamp's feeling pretty tight. So that's good. Okay. 
pretty much feels like it's all nipped up. That's good. Day four. Holy fucking shit! My lovely exhaust clamp. The, the nice thing is, is that obviously the um the the exhaust clamp for the actual joint just has one head on it. And we're going to try and keep it Yamaha factory by making sure that the exhaust clamp for the joint isn't sticking out like like this orientation or sticking out like that. When we found the original Yamaha exhaust clamps, the, the bolt was facing, you know, down. You're going to need a 10mm socket. Um, and it's your choice. You can either use a ratchet or you can use a hand tool like that. Whichever floats your boat, man. Whichever floats your boat. Tight. So that exhaust clamp already feels nice and bitey. One eternity later. Bad. So we move over to the other side. Try to replicate the same finish as well. We want the clamp to be just like factory where the head of the bolt is facing down. Just like it is on the factory Yamaha exhaust clamps. And you know, by doing it, by trying to, to replicate that factory finish, is you're also showing that you are, you know, you, if you're skilled at what you do, you have a certain knowledge, you've got that certain skill, which is quite nice. Um, and if this is something that you're actually going to do for um, a friend, obviously if your friend's paying you to do this, but even if you work in a professional environment, the uh, the owner of this legendary Yamaha XT is going to appreciate when you're making sure that you're just seeing the finish of the clamp, but you're hiding away the bolt that's holding that clamp in place. Little things like that. The, the owner is going to appreciate and go, do you know what? You actually put quality into what you did there. You're a good man. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Okay, and then that's... So, check that this baby's nipped up too. Okay, that feels pretty fucking tight, which is great. Again, same here, let's make sure baby can't go anymore. Yep, feels pretty fracking tight to me. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good, everyone. That's not bad. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, baby, yeah! Whoa. That was actually really nice. I mean, considering that is with the baffles in, that actually sounds pretty nice. She's got that like that like brr, brr, that, that bang bang in the exhaust system, and uh, actually sounds pretty good. I'm actually pretty pretty impressed with that, really. And what's so nice is you know the effort that I've have put in to make sure that the end cans are the same length and the same size as the factory cans. So you can see, these cans look right on the XT660R. There's no weird gaps. There's no weird gaps around the link pipes. It looks factory, but way better. How cool is that? Um, Yamaha XT660R, as you can see, he's just fully upgraded the exhaust system to make the XT not only talkier, but more powerful. You can you can hear that she sounds actually pretty fucking good uh, with her dialect. Hello, hello everyone, Luke Rides. Well, we've come to the end of this very fascinating workshop video. Uh, so you've just learned from the um, how to fit from the very back the Dialvic N-CANS full system 
all the way to the headers, to the, the uh, headers with link pipe with end cans. <laughs> The way we The little rascal has spirit. That's awesome. This is the end of the trail for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, kid. <laughs>